everyone, I'm Wei Xian and with me today is Sharon. Today Sharon and I are presenting to you the what's new in ArcGIS. You might probably seen some of the new capabilities on the plenary earlier this morning and are interested to know a little bit more. So what's new? We will cover the session in three parts. How you can create your first site using enterprise sites in ArcGIS Enterprise and how you can extract locations from unstructured text using Locate XT in ArcGIS Desktop and the sneak peeks of what are planned for for future releases of the respective products. So what's enterprise site? Can I have a show of hand? How many of you enjoy logging into your enterprise portal, <coughs> find your group, and browse your content from there? Seems like nobody really enjoys the experience, right? <laughs> the, the, the beauty of enterprise sites, as what is presented earlier in the plenary, is that you can create beautiful branded web pages that provide your users a tailored experience. <coughs> you will be able to tell your users what problem you are trying to solve, tell a cohesive story, and really make their discovery process easier. Although enterprise sites is new, your underlying component is still your enterprise portal, and all your portals stay to where they are and secure. And the best part, or parts, because there are two, is uh, you do not need any additional licensing for enterprise sites and you can create as many sites as you want, but just make sure that your enterprise deployment is scalable. So these are some of the examples of sites incorporating the underlying data and maps from the groups in your portal. So sounds interesting. What do you need before you can start creating your first site? We will need the base ArcGIS Enterprise 10.6.1 deployment, meaning all your data store, portal, and web adapters must be all configured together. Before doing configurations of your sites, it is strongly recommended that you enable HTTPS on your portal. This is because many web pages today expect HTTPS only. And in fact, in the next release of ArcGIS Enterprise, it will be enabled by default. Next, I will be showing you how you can create your first site. So early, mm, sorry. So earlier in the plenary, RBG has shown his site on public safety, law enforcement, but we do not need to be so serious in this breakout session. But ours will be also on public safety as well, but it will be on the citizen engagement, engaging the different groups within the community. Okay, We will need to have a user with an administrator role to be the first person to launch site using the site launcher, app launcher, in order to configure sites and get it ready for use. Okay. I would like to create a site for the senior citizens to raise their awareness on public safety. So I click on the create new site. Next, I set the site name to give the identity of our site. So and I type in the text, which will be appointed appended to the end of my portal URL. Okay. Next, I need to set the extent of the map. So when you look at a map on your search page, this will be the default extent. It by default, it uses your map uh, portal map extent, but you can also change it. So you can just change it, show an area. And then this will be the extent that will be used for all the maps in your search result. Okay. This is particularly useful if your organization is regionally divided. Okay. 
You can also change your default base map to custom base map. And by clicking the next button, it will create a site application in your portal. <coughs> now we are at the groups tab. It is a good idea to give your users a subset of your portal content. So it's good to query data that is relevant and find the group that matches the right content. So because we are creating a site for the senior, we'll be adding the senior watch. By clicking on the text, You can see the number of items that <coughs> this group has access to. To make sure that these are the data, that <coughs> these are the data that you will, will want it to be on your site. So you click add. You can click as many groups available in your portal, and you can remove it, them later if you change your mind. Next, I move on to the capabilities of the site. Okay. If your site is targeting users who are developers, and you you want then and they will be building integrations to any system in your organization. You will need to enable the API Explorer. This will expose a tab for every data set you have to teach them about how the API works. For example, how they can use the Joe Services API underneath each of your services. And if you have external web links as an item and you want to use it on your site, enabling the document iframe will dictate how those items will return <coughs> when you click it on the search result. This is particularly useful when you have a great looking dashboard or SharePoint that you want to share with your users. The content will be iframed into the map portion of the search result and you will get additional information of the item. Okay. Next will be the pages. Pages are mini sites. Uh, they are optional. Not every site needs to have a page. So for example, if you need to create an info page for this site, you can create a page. By going to the site manager, you can access all the tabs previously shown, and then it's very easy to navigate around. So I'll go to the okay. So we'll preview what my site looks like now. So what you see here is the out-of-the-box template. It will be created once you click the Save button. What is good about this template is that you can see how um, each component is being constructed. And if you find it useful, you can just copy and paste it or modify them if you want. Many of you all might be asking if these sites are mobile responsive. Yes, they are. They will be sized. according to your resolution, the size. So it's mobile responsive. Okay. Next, I'll move to the site editor, how you can actually build your site. So here you have it again, your default. So you have it again, this is your default template. There's a side panel, you can close and open anytime. And you can save your site and preview your site anytime you want. The cus site customization is break up into five components, the site info, header set setting, theme builder, layout builder, as well as the footer setting. For the site information, it's just the site name and about the site. For the header setting, it's only the name of your, it's a simple bar with the sign in. If you are interested in customizing the header, like you want to build your own navigation, you can too. If you click the use customize HTML and HTTPS, 
So it will provide you with a default template as well. So you can modify from here by clicking the gear button. You'll be able to see all the HTML embedded within this header. Here you can modify it from there. <coughs> the team builder sets the colors of your site. So for example, if I want to change the color of the header. Sorry, I need to show you my cheat code. You can just change it, click apply changes, and it will be reflected on top. Okay, if it's not clear, I'll change it to a red color, and it will be like that. Okay, just setting that to the default one because it's good enough for me. So it would be useful if you have your organization CCS style sheet, so you can apply it. Another recommendation is that you can install the Chrome extension, any extension that is available on the browser to make your life easier because these are all in hex. So you can just click and then pick a color and then it will tell you the value of the color. So you can just copy and paste it over here. So you need to, after changing, you'll need to click apply changes for the changes to be reflected. Next, I'll move on to the layout builder. So this is the bulk of where your customization will be. Okay, the most important card is the row card. As you can see, the site is mixed up of a series of rows. And whenever you move your mouse over a particular widget or a row, you will have you will see three controls. The first one will allow you to drag and drop the card or any widget, and then when you move, you will be able to see the anchor point on top below, and then can delete something from the row to make it empty. And when you move it, it will show you the landing point. This will be the landing point. Okay. If not, it will show you the anchor point. You can anchor it top, right, left, and bottom. The gear, the second button, the gear button, allows you to change the setting of the particular row. For example, if you want to change the text, you can change it, or the color of the row. Or even set a background image. Next, I'll show you the banner card. So as you can see, the banner is a whole chunk of, of because this is a site for the senior citizen, so you need to find a suitable background image. Okay, you can change the color a bit. And then you can darken the image if it's too bright. If the row card is the most important widget in the site editor, the text card is the most powerful one. You can drag a text card, and then you, you can modify it using the gear button. And you can insert markdowns or HTML text within this text widget. For example, you can put a simple header. something useful, bullet list, or a link in your site. And 
and then it will appear the header, the links, and the text. So if you are not familiar with markdowns, markdowns are just a uh, shorthand for HTML. If you are not familiar, you can always Google for the syntax, or you can just simply insert a HTML. Then it will be a link. A text card is useful if it can serve as a text placeholder as well. So if you if you can see if I move my text to an existing row with a widget, it will split the row into fifty percent. You can make this smaller or bigger up to child space child spaces left or right. It can also serve as a placeholder like I said previously. If you want your text to be aligned to the left. So just now I have said that if you are interested in doing one of the particular stuff, cool stuff that you saw on the default template, you can always copy and paste. So can open up the default HTML tag and copy whatever you want from the default template into your text card. Next is the category. The users of your site need not do not know what content you have in your in your portal. So the category card actually shows them a subset and then categorize your data. So that when they know that if they probably know that when they come to the site, oh, I'm looking for something that is relevant to crime, so you can configure the co category card, give it a tag theming, and then tag a query like it's related to crime. Then you can pick an icon from the template existing template, and then you can change the color of the icon as well. You probably can't change the color of the text because it's using the colors that you have defined inside your theme template, the theme builder. So next is the contact info. If we want the particular senior citizen to contact us, you can contact me change the email address and then change the email subject line you can also include a web map that shows them uh, where are all your senior citizens located you can click find a web map and then pick any of the web map that is in your portal so I'll give the title. And then we can see that most of the senior citizens are located in the east of the island. You can also include charts. I believe in the earlier panel in the plenary earlier RBG I shared with you the scatter plot, but there are also other charts that you can insert, like the bar chart, pie chart, and all those charts. Besides charts, you can also put in the summary statistics. For example, we are interested in how many crimes are there in Singapore revol revolving the senior citizens. I can add the data. choose some like recorded crime and then you'll be able to pick a statistic field and then you can do counts and your mathematics functions change the statistic 
something. And you have the statistics. It will be useful if you have liked it, uh, feature layers that are being updated constantly, and then you can see your statistics change in real time. Now move on to the gallery. The gallery is a row with four cards. You can set it to the data set that you have in your portal or the sites that you have in your portal. You can change the number of cards. For example, I want like eight per row, three per row, but the recommendation is to stick to four. to use the thumbnail of your data so it appears yeah, so I don't have <coughs> yeah so it appears here this will link to the uh, all the other groups of uh, groups of people that we want to engage within this site so what is so special about this gallery is that it respects the sharing of the users for example, I can if I can see more items than you, then I will have more tiles returning for my gallery. So for example, if I have access, uh, if I don't have access to the community watch site, probably I'll just see the used watch, the seasons of patrol and the neighborhood watch. I won't be seeing the commercial watch. Okay, so let's save the site. View the site. Okay, so this is our site. So when we click on the other side, it actually links to the other side. So this is what we have done be before this session, the Corps of Citi Citizens on Patrol. So you can actually build uh, beautiful web pages like this, raise, uh, highlight the most recent security concerns that the community have. And we can do a search. So if probably if I search for traffic. So this is the result page. And then this will show the default map as then. And then the thumbnails, the relevant thumbnails. And then when you click this particular heat map that I have, you can actually view the metadata. So the various APIs, what APIs you can use, favorites and the layers, and you can actually create a web map directly from your result page. So this actually reduces the learning curve of using portal. And it can show you the attributes of what is in the layer list, feature layer. So now I will share with you the best practices for site design. Number one, always use the theme that reflect your organization, something that your users are familiar with and they can relate to. Number two, consider how the sites will be used most. For example, our site is responsive, so you might want to consider uh, how the site will be displayed on mobile devices. Uh, consider the accessibility, whether your s make your site as readable as possible, avoid putting white text on white background. Prepare your portal content, such as your summary, your thumbnails, and your text. These are important. And lastly, sketch your site so that you have a rough idea on how your site is going to look like. Next, I'll pass it to Sharon, who will share with you the Locate XT extension in ArcGIS desktop. Thank you, Wei Xian. 
and thank you to all of you who have stayed with us until the last session of the day. Uh, I promise you it will be worth the stay because what I'm going to show now is something that has not yet been shown in any of the sessions as far as I'm aware. Um, Jack did mention it earlier on in the plenary, but it was in passing. So this is the new technology that I'm going to showcase. It's, a, it's called Locate XT. And so before I jump into the new technology, I um, just want to talk a little bit about unstructured data. So ArcGIS is able to ingest many different data types. You can ingest vector data, raster data, 3D, LiDAR data, and I think you've seen many, many different types in the conference today. But there's a type of data type that we are not able to ingest as, as of before we had this new technology, and that is unstructured data. So what is unstructured data, and what's the problem with it? Um, unstructured data is essentially data that doesn't come in, in a form where you can easily ingest in any kinds of platform. So they could be your Word documents, they could be your PDF documents, notepad files, where there are actually location information that are put inside, that are, that are actually referenced inside these documents. So these are the inf this, this information is hard to pick up because you will need to like read through the whole document in order to pick up the location information. And these are the type of um, data that is going to be hard to geocode or hard to um, convert to a feature within any kind of GIS platform. So that is our problem with fishing out this data. There's another type of unstructured data problem where the data comes in semi-structured. So we all know that um, ArcGIS is able to take in CSV files, Excel files, where you have specific data columns where your lat long is stored. But if you look at this file, there's lat long, but they're all in different types of formats. And, all and, and, and so you're not able to be able to ingest this kind of data if, if you're just bringing it into ArcGIS. You may be able to represent some of them, but not all of them. And a lot of analysts actually spend 80% of their time trying to format it nicely. And this is just a very short Excel file. Imagine if you have thousands, millions of rows in an in a Excel file or a CSV file that you need to actually convert. So that's really very time consuming. Another related problem with unstructured data is when you have to search through your unstructured data. Okay, so for those who are familiar with SQL search statements, you know that they will need to match the text, uh, the text that you have keyed in exactly in order for you to find it. Okay, of course, if you are really, really good with your SQL skills, you are able to add in wildcards, you are able to add in um, uh, ways to, to search for data that may not fit the same kind of um, spelling. But for the, for the majority of us, we are very used to Google search, where you key in and it's able to take in uh, spelling mistakes. It's able to guess what you're actually trying to search for. So that is another problem that we face with unstructured data and with the search tool within our GIS at the moment. Okay, so Locate XT actually comes in to try and resolve this problem. It is able to take in thousands of different kinds of formats of lat long coordinates. It can take in different data types, um, like Word documents, Excel files, PDF files, um, text documents, so uh, it can able it is able to ingest all these different data types and to be able to pick out location information in all of these files, whether they are lat longs, they are names of cities or names of countries. Okay, so what does the technology encompass? It has a desktop component where there is a standalone desktop app. So if you install it, you'll see this desktop app on your machine. Okay, it is also an app map extension. It will also be incorporated into ArcGIS Pro in the new upcoming release, which is 2.3. Okay, there is also a desktop geoprocessing tool that you can add in. So there are various ways you can actually make use of the tool. Okay, there is also the server edition of this tool where you are able to publish a geoprocessing service and you can write a web application to consume that. Um, there are APIs that you can use to, to uh, customize it as well. And to solve the, the search problem, we they, there's also this find FZ component, where al which allows you to do fuzzy, fuzzy type of searches. Okay, so right now I'm going to show you how um, this extension is going to help me ingest unstructured data. Okay, so I have a map document, and that's, and that's where we usually start. Okay, you will see that I have two additional toolbars here, which is the Locate XT and the Find FZ. Okay, so the Locate XT um, software is really simple to use. It is a drag and drop interface. Okay, so if we take a look at our input file, okay, this is a Word document. It is a 93-page Word document. So for you to pick up all the locations, it's going to take you time. 
to read through the document. And if you see here, there are lead long coordinates that are, that are just embedded within the text of this document. Okay, I've highlighted it, it in red here so that you know we can we can look uh, we can see it very clearly. But it does not need to be highlighted in red in order to for the tool to work. Okay, so when we go back to ArcMap, okay, all we need to do is we drag this file onto the interface. Okay, I want to create a new feature cl class for this. Okay, and I click scan. Okay, so I define where I want to store this feature class, and you see that it actually converts it very quickly, 93 pages of it. Okay, and these are all the points that I have um, within the document. So if I click on any of that points, you will see the extracted location in let long. Okay, and then what it also does is it picks out the pretext, which is like a, a number of characters before the location was, was found, and the post text, which is a number of characters after. Okay, so it gives you context about what this location is about. Okay, so it can not only take in a single uh, Word document, it is also able to take in a folder. Okay, so I have a folder here of Word documents. All of uh, these documents contain some location information inside. So I just need to drag this whole folder in. I selected shapefile. Okay, so it it Joe coded so many um, files in in a short time. Okay, and these are the points that are here. Okay, so if I open all the data inside, I would see the type of extracted uh, information and what kind of coordinates that they are in. Okay, and I'm also, uh, and you might um, ask the question of, you know, all the demos I've shown is all on um, coordinates, let long coordinates. Am I able to pick up city names? Okay, so you can also do that by putting in custom attributes, uh, no, custom locations by what we call a gazetteer file. Okay, so if I take a look at the files, these are just a list of cities with the let long coordinates of that city. Okay, so you can actually create this on your own. But of course, you will need to go and find all the let long um, coordinates of the cities. Okay, so once I specify that I want to use this file, okay, I run the scan again. Okay, so you see from the data that is extracted, there are more records that are being extracted because there's the let long coordinates plus the city name. Okay, so this is this is these are the records that are based on city names, and these are the city names that has been extracted from the text. Okay, so I'm going to show an example of um, semi-structured data by using a different tool, which is called a structured document import. Okay, so this takes in an Excel file that looks something like that, which is what you see in the slide earlier. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop this. Okay, so you'll notice that it's a different interface because it's a different tool. Um, it actually takes in the data structure of my Excel. Okay, so there's a difference between uh, uh, putting in as a scan and putting in as a import. Okay, so I just need to specify the column that actually stores my coordinates. I click finish. Okay, and this is the resulting feature class, and you'll notice the columns are exactly like my Excel over here. Okay, so you might ask, this is just on the desktop uh, um, um, interface. What about um, other kinds of interface? Okay, so it is also able to uh, put my results on ArcGIS Earth. So I'll have here a PDF file, and this PDF file stores let long coordinates of different um, state parks. 
Okay, so all I need to do is I right click and you see that there's a clear Terra menu item here. Okay, so all I need to do is a scan and I export it as a KML. Okay, and I flip over to ArcGIS Earth. I'm able to see the data, the data put inside ArcGIS Earth. Okay, so when I click on it, you'll see exactly the same kind of data structure that's being imported. Okay, so I'm going to show a demo about um, the fuzzy search that I talked about earlier. Okay, so if I were to look, this, these are just a uh, data set of cell towers in USA. Okay, so if I were to use the find tool, So if I use the traditional find tool and I want to look for this uh, tower called Malu Ridge, okay, I do not know how it's spelled. I'm just guessing based on what I hear of it. And I click on find, I realize that I'm not able to find anything. Okay, So this is a very typical uh, kind of search problem that we have. If you were to search for Jalan Topayo, you're not sure whether you should put in the short form, which is JLN, or Jalan spelled in full. Okay, so, I'm so you can try many different ways you know, you can shorten the text to Malu, and I'm still not able to find anything. And if I shorten it further, okay, I'm able to find something, but I find about a thousand over records. So because as when it gets short, it do looks for just this MAR, and it can appear anywhere within my uh, feature. So if I flip over to the find FZ2, and I key in the same search term, I find that I'm still not able to find anything. Okay, but if I come here and I increase the fuzzy error level to 30%, okay, then I find something. Okay, and I realize that it's actually spelled differently from what I know of it. Okay, so this is where the fuzzy uh, error level comes in. You can set 30% uh, or 15%, and then that, that gives you the kind of um, er spelling errors that it can tolerate. Okay, so that was a very quick demo of the functionality. It's not the full suite of functionality. Of course, there are, there's a lot more and you can explore into that. Okay, so there is also the server edition where you can publish the geoprocessing tool and you can have a web app that can do exactly the same thing like what I do on the desktop. Okay, so now I'm just going to jump into the next part. It's, it's going to be quick. It's just some sneak peeks about the upcoming uh, new things that Ashley has. Okay, so I'm going to start with ArcGIS Indoors. Okay, I think a lot of you are very familiar with um, outdoors, with search on outdoors. How do I get from place to place? Uh, where are all my assets located? So this is just bringing what we are familiar with on the outdoors to the indoors. Okay, so now I'm able to route within the building. Okay, of course, Max Atria is quite a small building. It's able to, you're, you're able to find your way easily. But if you're in a big place, you, you want to get from place to place, how are you going to route from within the building? Okay, so that's what ArcGIS Indoors aims to, uh, uh, to, to fulfill. Okay, it helps you locate where all your assets are. It helps you with operations management. Okay, so it is a very new product. It is not actually released yet, okay, but there are some uh, gen general high-level workflow that you can go through, uh, that you can plan to, to, to put into this new uh, application. So there is a specific schema that you need to deploy in order to use the app. So the first step is in deploying this schema. Okay, of course, you will need floor plans of your indoors. So they can be CAD drawings that you can bring in. And there are tools on ArcGIS Pro that you can use to run this. Okay, you will need to configure data connections to any other data that you like to bring in to the map. Uh, app connections, you can connect to Survey123 to collect the app. Okay, and if you uh, want to configure the search, if you want to look for specific rooms, specific assets, that is the search that you probably need to configure, and how your icons are going to look on your map. Okay, then you will need to create the network data set for your routing. Okay, and there are also tools available in ArcGIS Pro for you to create a network map that looks something like that, okay, so that I'm able to route from place to place. Okay, then after that, I will just need to share my map and my scenes, and I'm able to do routing. Okay, so what's up upcoming in Ops Dashboard? Okay, there are a few uh, new things. I'm just quickly run through. There are new layout options available. Okay, there is also better smartphone experience. 
okay, it, they have recently released uh, the support of uh, Ops dashboard on the smartphone browser. They're just going to improve the whole experience of viewing it on the smartphone. Okay, of course, there's also going to be a long list of new tools that's available in ArcGIS Pro. And one of it would be that uh, new tool that supports Locate XC technology. Okay, and so these are the list of resources. Um, if you want to take a picture of it, these are the places that you can get more information about what we've shown today. Okay, and if you are interested in any training, okay, these are the training that you can go for.